Arvind Adiga's latest novel, Last Man in Tower, deals with the dubious world of Bombay's real estate. Dharmen Shah is the average Bombay character. He moved from Krishnapur, a small town with 12 rupees and 80 paisa in his pocket and some dreams, obviously. Along the way, he became a real estate tycoon. His latest project means that he'll have to buy out the residence of Tower A of Vishram Cooperative Housing Society to build a luxury housing project. All the residents of the housing society agree under pressure to move out, except Master G, a retired school teacher who was once the most respected man in the building. The ocean breaking below your window. A lizard on the ceiling staring at you with fat, envious eyes. And in the next room, a woman 26 years younger, brushing her freshly washed hair and sending waves of strawberry and aloe towards your nostrils. Dharmin Shah yawned. He saw no reason to get out of bed. Woke up, Rosie called from her room. Come and see what I've bought for you, uncle, a surprise. Let me sleep, Rosie. Come. She took him by his hand and led him into the living room. There it lay, propped up against the sofa. A framed three-part poster that showed the Eiffel Tower being erected in stages. For you, Mr. Builder, to put up in your office. Very sweet of you, Rosie, Shah said, and put his hand on his heart. He was truly touched, even though the money was his. Eiffel, he said, seated at the laminated dining table outside the kitchen, was the same fellow who built the Statue of Liberty. What would we do with him in India? Ask, what is your caste? What is your family? What is your background? Sorry, go away. The fat man stretched his hands and flexed his toes. Rosie turned from the kitchen to see him yawning indulgently. Rosie, he said, did I ever tell you that I was my father's first wife's son? No, uncle, you never tell me about yourself. They pulled my mother out of a well one day. That is the very first memory I have. She came out of the kitchen and wiped her hands. I was four years old. She jumped into the well in our house in Krishnapur. Why did she do it? He shrugged. A year later, I had a stepmother. She had four sons. They got all my father's love. He would not even look at me with kindness. The worst part was this. He made me feel ashamed, Rosie. It was as if my mother's suicide were my fault. He would glare at me if anyone ever mentioned it. And then? Then came the day he went to his father's grocery store and asked, May I have a bicycle, father? It's my 16th birthday. To be told no, even though a younger half-brother had received one. Understanding then that being second best was what was expected of the sons of a first wife, he left home the next morning with 12 rupees and 80 paise that he had saved up. He walked, took the bus, took the train, ran out of money and walked again, till the sandals had fallen off his feet and he had to tie plantain leaves around them. Reached Bombay. He had never once returned to Krishnapur.